Good morning, Rutherford County. My name is Chris Carlson. This is my wife, Claire. Uh, we're very glad to be with you this morning to share with you uh, for the next 30 minutes uh, some things that God has put on our hearts. Uh, we wanted to um, just share with you basically our testimony uh, to let you know, give you encouragement and hope uh, as far as God's plans for your life and his keeping power on your life. Um, as we, we started uh, talking about this uh, show, Claire and I, uh, we realized, we looked at the events in our lives over the last uh, years, and there were big events and small events, but um, God was really using these to teach us how to know him and to keep us in his will for our lives. If you turn to, uh, if you have a Bible, turn to Psalms 121, verse 8. That's Psalms 121, verse 8. It says, The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. This is God's promise to, our, to believers. We've seen it true in our own lives uh, through the years. Uh, God has kept us kept us in his path, kept us in his will, and we're just very grateful for that. Claire has some things uh, to share with you. Um, I grew up in Minnesota in a large family of seven children. We attended the Catholic Church faithfully, and I knew, I knew about God, but I never knew about having a relationship with him. So I learned things about God, but I never heard the term born again. I never heard about the plan of salvation, I never heard any of that, you know. But um, I know the strict upbringing that I had and the respect I had for my parents, though that was the keeping power in my life because that kept me from things that I didn't need to get involved in. And um, my mom prayed. Every day she prayed for all seven of her children. She would pray that we would be, we would grow to be strong spiritually morally and mentally and I know that prayer was also the keeping power of God in my life and um, after graduating from high school I went to community college for two years and then I was going on to a four-year college to get a degree in accounting and at that time my mom gave me a Bible and I'd never had a Bible I never read the Bible I mean I'd heard about you know the priest was the one that said anything from the Bible, but I never had a Bible. At this time in my mom's life, she was being drawn to the things of God. So she said, here, I want you to take this Bible. And, and she started to tell me about being born again. And I really didn't understand it. And she said, well, you believe Jesus is the Son of God. You believe Jesus died for your sins. And I said, yes. And she said, well, then you're born again. And in my heart, I thought, oh, I don't know that that's true. But anyway, I, you know, took that Bible with me. And also at this time in my life, I had this overwhelming fear. It was just a fear. I can't even describe it, but it would just grip me. And I couldn't even tell you what I was afraid of. I mean, it was like I, was, I had fear of fear. And, and, and I could feel like, you know, I was going to go crazy sometimes. But I would, when I went away to college, I started to read that Bible. And the amazing thing is I could understand it because I didn't think I'd be able to understand it. But I could understand it and it would bring peace to my heart. And also, when I went to college, I met this girl. She was in the same dormitory as me. And she told me, she said, well, I'm a born-again Christian. And I was, I was shocked. You know, here's a person my age, and they're born again. And so I was very intrigued and asked her lots and lots of questions because I wanted to know. And um, so really, that was how she became one of my best friends. And I know it was because together we were seeking the things of God, and we were searching for God, wanting to know, know Him more. And um, 
you know, when you go away to college, that's a time that, you know, you could stray away from God and stray away and get into things that aren't the right plan for your life. But actually, the opposite happened to me. When I was reading that Bible and met this friend, that was God's keeping power in my life. And that was keeping me and God was drawing me to him at that time. After graduation, I worked in the accounting field for about three years, and then I was engaged to be married. Now, nobody in my family approved of this person I was going to marry, and really, he was totally opposite of me. I can't even tell you why I wanted to marry him, but I was, despite what they said, what they thought, I was still going to marry him. And then one day, um, a friend of mine from high school called me and she had become a Christian at this time and we were just talking and then she said to me she said Claire there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about being unequally yoked and I'll give you that scripture it's 2nd Corinthians 6 14 and it says do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers do not make mismated alliances with them or come under a different yoke with them inconsistent with your faith how can light have fellowship with darkness and when she gave me that scripture I knew I knew in my heart I cannot marry this person but yet I thought I, I wasn't really strong enough to break it off so I prayed I said Jesus if you don't want me to marry him if that is not your will for my life then let him call it off and it wasn't long after that, he did call it off. But of course, he thought he was just postponing it. But I knew that he wasn't the one I was supposed to marry. Because God all along had Chris for me. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But anyway, after that, I still had this desire. I wanted to know Jesus. I really wanted to know him. So that same friend who had talked to me and given me that scripture... Um, told me about a Bible school in Tulsa. So I went. I went to that Bible school. I thought, well, I studied accounting to learn about accounting. I'm gonna, I need to go to a Bible school to, to learn about Jesus. So I went, and I went to meeting after meeting. I mean, lots of things, lots of teachings. And, you know, I would come home and I'd think to myself, that was a very good teaching, but how do you live that? How do you live that? And one day I was reading my Bible, and I read this scripture. It's Philippians 3.10. And it says, My determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly, that I may in that same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection, and that I may so share his sufferings so as to be continually transformed in spirit into his likeness, even into his death. And that was, I read that scripture. I read it all the time, all the time. Jesus, I want to know you. Jesus, I want to know you. And really that became a prayer. That became my prayer. And that scripture, that that. That was another place where God was keeping me. So after I lived in Tulsa for about three years, and then I um, took an accounting position in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, after three months, I'd only worked at this place for three months, my employer called me in and said, Claire, you're not working out here. And he terminated me. Uh, that was pretty devastating and, uh, but at the time, I didn't know anybody in Virginia Beach, well, except the few people that I met where I worked. And, but I didn't have any family there. And like I said, I'd come from a large family, so family was very important to me. But yet, in my heart, I felt like I needed to stay in Virginia Beach. I just felt like I needed to. And, um, you know, that really was God's keeping power for me, because... I ended up getting a job with a Christian couple, and they were friends of Chris's parents, and it was through them that I met Chris. 
And after knowing each other for like a year and a half, we ended up getting married. And um, Chris is going to go on and tell you his testimony now. Uh, I grew up uh, in a military family. My dad was a Navy pilot uh, on the West Coast, and this was during the 60s. Uh, I spent about 10 years in California for the first part of my life, um, and this was during Vietnam. Um, it was not a Christian family by any definition. Uh, there was a lot of drinking and smoking and partying, uh, as you could imagine, uh, between <coughs> pilots, and we were exposed to all of that. Um, but in, I think it was 1964, 1965, uh, he got orders to the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California. Uh, it was just a one-year tour. Uh, and so we moved there. Um, and so during that time, God was beginning to get to his heart. And uh, there was a little lady, uh, I still remember her name, it was Nell Hoyt, we called her grandmother. And she was very influential and very much used by God to get to my parents' hearts and begin to teach them uh, about Jesus. Now, the interesting thing is here in the keeping power of God, uh, President Johnson, uh, I believe it was, escalated <coughs> the war in Vietnam. And so during that escalation was during the one year period that my dad was removed from the base. Uh, to go to school. And so a lot of his friends, a lot of his acquaintances that he knew from the base were shot down. And so his life was spared. And I really see that at that time as the keeping power of God on his life. Um, and so uh, they met this lady. She was very influential in Monterey to begin to lead them. And they came home one day um, and I remember seeing a change, even though I was only about seven years old, I saw a change on my parents, uh, how they related to each other, how they responded, how the household was going. And I wanted that change for myself. So I remember sitting on the couch asking my mom about that. And so that was the beginning of God getting to my heart, um, and, and showing me, his will for my life at that age. Um, we moved, being in the military again, we moved from base to base about every two and a half years or so. Um, and my parents, you know, to the best that they knew, would always try to find the best church that they could go to. Uh, it didn't matter what the denomination was. Um, I remember going to Baptist church, Protestant church, Presbyterian church, non-denominational church, churches whatever was available whatever they could find there was a hunger in their heart and and they took us boys uh, to church um, I was taught from a very early age to be nice to be polite to be pleasant uh, to be mannerly but I was never really taught to know Jesus for myself you know I saw around me um, my parents did the best that they could, um, but I never really got to that place where I wanted Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. But there is still a drawing uh, and a keeping power on my life for that. Um, <coughs> eventually, my dad was uh, ordered to Japan. We spent two and a half years there. Um, and at the end of that tour, he told the Navy, he said, no more sea duty. I'm done. Um, and that effectively would kill a career. Um, you don't tell the Navy I'm not going to be uh, in sea duty anymore. Um, but we ended up transferring to uh, the University of South Carolina, to the ROTC unit in Columbia, South Carolina. And again, this is a keeping power of God. As you look back, um, as I had said earlier, uh, when you look back and you see how all these events happen, um, then you can see how God directs your life and how he orders your life and how, it, and how all the pieces begin to fit together. 
And so that moved us from the Orient to the East Coast. So we spent four years in Columbia, and then he was transferred to Norfolk, Virginia for four years. During that time, that allowed me to finish high school in one place, which is very unusual for a military family because uh, we moved so much. Um, there was at that place, there was a very, uh, one of the most prominent Christian high schools in the nation. Um, and so I attended that school. I went to school there for four years, graduated. When, uh, when I was looking around at the student body, though, I didn't see things lining up. I saw the students doing things that didn't line up with the Bible. Um, from my grade all the way up to high school, um, <coughs> you know, they really didn't, um, you know, it's kind of Christian in name only. A lot of stuff going on. Um, but uh, in, as I'm looking back, in Proverbs 16, 9, uh, there's a verse that says, A man's mind plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps and makes him sure. And that was a time in my life uh, when I graduated, um, I didn't really know that verse. And so there was a lot of pressure uh, on me at that point to, uh, to decide what was I going to do, what was I going to be, what was my life going to hold for me. It was all out in front of me, and I didn't know enough to trust God for each day. So I felt like I had to decide everything all at one time, and I got really sick um, just because of the, the pressure. Uh, that was there. Um, so eventually, uh, my dad got one more tour. He was assigned to Europe, so I needed to do something, uh, and I didn't know what that was going to be. Um, so I decided to go to school, but I knew if I went to a state school, uh, the temptation to sin would be too great on my life. So I found a Christian college in Oklahoma. I went there. Um, that school, um, again, was, um, there were students from all across the country. All denominations were there. But as I looked at what I saw in the student body, uh, I didn't see a lot of Jesus. Uh, there was a lot going on there. Um, it was about Jesus in name only. Um, so I graduated from that. Dad retired, moved back to Virginia Beach, and he had it on his heart to um, have his sons build his house. Now, I could not find a job in my field of study. So I knew construction, um, and so my brothers and I ended up building his house. And that was actually a very quiet time in my life. And... Um, you know, God was really beginning to speak to me. And I remember distinctly one day, uh, it was in the winter, I turned to my mom and dad and I said, God's really put it on my heart that I'm to get married. And my mom just laughed out loud um, because I wasn't seeing anybody. I didn't know anybody. And she just thought, how is that going to happen? And... Um, but God was continuing uh, to get to my heart. About six months later, like Claire said, I had met her through some mutual friends of my parents. And about a year and a half after that, uh, we got married. Um, later on, uh, <coughs> after about three years, my mom and dad had already moved to uh, Rutherford County to become members with the Word of Faith Fellowship. And... Uh, but we still had a hunger and a desire for God to change our hearts. And so um, I had seen their lives and I saw the changes in them and they were continuing to change. And so God had us move down here. Um, and so we've, you know, we attended, attended many churches through the years, both Claire in Oklahoma and, and I was in Oklahoma. Um, we're actually in Oklahoma at the same time, but it wasn't God's time for us to meet. But all the churches that we met uh, and went to, um, 
we never, until we moved here, we never found a church that preached the Word of God that taught people how to live what they preached. And so well, we're very grateful for that. Yeah, and really when we came here, there were some keys that we learned at the Word of Faith Fellowship that really changed our lives. And one of the things was in order to walk with Jesus, we needed to acknowledge any sin in our lives and repent from, for that sin. Because sin separates us from God. And we don't want to be separated. We wanted to walk with Jesus. And in 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Everything not in conformity to his will, in purpose, thought, and action. And, and then when we acknowledge that sin, we repent. And there's a scripture that says in Matthew 5, 3, 8, Bring forth fruit that is consistent with repentance. Let your lives prove your change of heart. And when I began to see, when I repent truly out of my heart, my life changes. My heart changes. And and that's what repentance is. When it's a heartfelt repentance, your life will change. Another key was we can hear God's voice and obey. In Psalm 40, verse 6, it says, You have given me the capacity to hear and obey. And why do we want to hear God's voice and obey Him? Because when you obey the commands of God... That proves and that shows that you love him. That's what he says in John 14, 15. If you really love me, you will keep, obey my commands. And so we want to hear his voice so that we can obey him. Another key is that God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. And all we want is to do the will of God. That was a key for me. In John five thirty, it says, I'm able to do nothing from myself but only as I'm taught by God and I get his orders. As the voice comes to me, I give a decision, and my judgment is right because I do not seek or consult my own will, my own aim, my own purpose, but only the pleasure of the Father who sent me. And that's all I want to do. I know that's what Chris wants. We just want the will of God in our lives. And the... One of the last keys, I mean, there's many keys. These were just ones that really stood out to me, was prayer and deliverance. And James 5.16 says, The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. And we have learned to pray with our whole heart. And earlier I told you about the... um, that overwhelming fear that would just grip me. Well, that plagued me all these years, for years and years. Sometimes it'd be stronger than other times. But at this point, I knew that was a spirit of fear. And and that, and so I needed prayer. And one day I got, I had some friends pray with me and that spirit of fear left. And that does not plague me anymore. And the other thing God told me at that time, that if you will deal with any rebellion in your life, you will never go crazy. And these were keys that have kept us, um, kept us walking with Jesus. And actually in 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And really, that was the devil's plan in my life, to make me so full of fear and you know, to not have a sound mind. But God had a plan and a purpose for my life. And as you can see through our testimony, even just having a small desire in our hearts to walk with Jesus, you know, God has kept us so that we could come to this place where we could know Jesus, that he would be real in our life, and every day we can walk with him. It's a daily thing. I'm reminded in the scriptures uh, about the story of Joseph. I love that story um, because 
it shows how different circumstances uh, evolve in a person's life. A lot of those circumstances aren't good. Some of them may not be happy. Some may be distraught. And how, if you look at his life in Genesis, um, he went from uh, his father giving him a coat, his brothers being jealous of him. Uh, he had a dream that uh, the sheaves would bow down, the sun and moon would bow down, uh, and they, they hated him, really. Um, and so when they were out shepherding uh, his father's sheep, the father sent the son, Joseph, out to check on them. And they said, this is the time we can kill him, get rid of the dreamer. And so, uh, but they threw him in a pit and sold him into slavery. And so these are not happy circumstances. These are not um, things that you would consider joyful at all. And they sold him into slavery. He went to Egypt. Uh, he went into Potiphar's house who bought him. Um, God prospered him there. But again, he was, he was a slave. He was not free. Um, then he was falsely accused uh, of doing something that he did not do. And he was thrown in jail. So you saying, how can all of this be God's plan for someone's life? And so while he's in jail, he met the Pharaoh's baker and butler. They had dreams, uh, and he interpreted the dreams, and they both came true. One died, and one was saved. Um, the one who was saved was restored back to his position with Pharaoh, and then Pharaoh had a dream. And so when Pharaoh had a dream, no one could interpret it. And then I believe it was a butler said, I can. I know a person in jail that can do it. And so they called Joseph forth. And in one day, he went before Pharaoh and interpreted the dream. And Pharaoh said, well, who, who's such a man that can, that can do this? And he chose Joseph. And so you see, it was bad situation, bad situation, bad situation. It seemed to be going from bad to worse. But in the end, when the famine was so severe, Joseph's brothers came and they asked for food and they ended up bowing down to him. And when he revealed himself to his brothers, uh, they were shocked. But he told them, don't be afraid. He said, God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. So all of these bad situations seemingly that happened to Joseph were set in such a way, and Joseph saw God did that to preserve the life of his family. Um, so I encourage you to go in and <coughs> read that uh, story. Uh, in Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, God tells us this, I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. And many of you listening are involved in situations and circumstances that you may not understand. You may not see it. Um, in our life, we didn't see the purpose of every situation. But as we look back, we can see how God ordered our steps and brought us to the place that we are today. So we encourage you not to give up, but to have hope uh, and to trust God that his plans for your life as you serve him, his plans for your life will come into place. Um, you'll see how all these things fit together. You may not see it all now, but you'll see it uh, in the end. But we thank you very much for listening to us, spending this time with us. We hope this has uh, encouraged you uh, and strengthened you and uplifted you. You can listen to other uh, people share on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays uh, from 8.30 to 9 o'clock on WCAB. And there are also uh, many, many other uh, testimonies and people sharing. You can find that on www.wordoffaithfellowship.org. We thank you very much for being with us, and we hope you have a great day.